Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 8. So this time we're going to take a look at our start and finish area within the game itself and we'll also look at animation and specifically making a moving platform to allow us to perhaps take us over here. So we're going to start with that whole incident or rather idea I should say of creating a moving platform and already we have these blocks over here set as our prefab and it's these prefabs that I want to try and move. So I'm going to have this right here and I'm going to take it and hold control press D and I'm going to bring it to there. So this is going to be our entire platform. So I'm going to right click, rename and just call it platform 001. So I want it to move over here to another platform itself where we can actually get off where our finish will be. So to make sure I get this just right so the motions are all right, I'm going to duplicate platform 001 again, bring it to here, and then once more, and bring it to here, and then delete the middle platform. So now we have a gap. We can see where this platform is going to constantly move to and from. And this we'll just rename as, uh, rename it back to block um six by four isn't it so six by four and in brackets i'm going to put zero just so as i know i've created that one myself because this is going to be where our finish is so the idea of animation is constantly move an object and we use the animation tab so we have to make sure that platform zero one is selected and what i'll usually like to do is have its own folder where we store all animations so let's right click create folder and call it animations and let's make sure we're in that folder let's bring our view over so we can see make sure we have platform 001 selected click on animation and then click on create you'll be prompted to create an animation name and we'll call this uh, l01 because level 01 and we'll call it platform 01 so l01 p01 and save now, we'll need to press the record button because we're going to record this animation. It may seem a little bit odd to record an animation first, but that's just the easiest and quite frankly best way to do it. So we're going at 60 frames a second. You can change this if you want to, but I'm going to keep it as 60. So the first keyframe is zero is going to be its initial starting position. So this is going to be its starting position, which is right there. So all we need to do is rewrite those figures. So X, in fact, it's only going to move on the X, so we'll only use the X. So let's do it as 12.27 and hit enter. You'll notice that turns red. That means the keyframe has been set. So I want it to move over here in the course of, let's say, three seconds and move back over the course of three seconds. And I want it to do that constantly. So three seconds at 60 frames a second would mean by the 180th frame, hit enter we need this platform to be over here and we can do that so easily if we just hold control and drag our platform over to where it should be which is right there then it means that the keyframe has been set so by the 180th frame our platform is right there so that means that by the 360th frame which is another three seconds we want the platform to be back here so we type in 360, hit enter, and then move our platform back. And then just press the record button to stop that animation. So the idea of what's happened here is we have created its keyframe, the starting position. We've told it where we want it to be at three seconds, and we've told it where we want it to be at six seconds. And then that animation will loop over and over. So it gives the impression this object is moving back and forth between these two ledges. So let's press play and check that out. Already we can see it in action. Oops, I need to jump up. And I'm not very good at this. I should, uh... there we go. So we can see the ledge is working just fine. Now, we want to go on this ledge, but it's not as simple as just getting on the ledge, as you can see. We need to create a special kind of script which will allow us 
to inter well kind of interact it sounds like it's interacting but it isn't really it's a way of the game recognizing that we're actually connected to something and to do that we go on block uh sorry platform zero one and we'll need to right click 3d object cube let's uh, bring this cube into a position that covers the entirety of this block and we do that by changing its size so in this case it needs to be scale of four by six so it covers the entire platform and then we just align it on the top right there so as this platform moves the cube will move as well so we should see that in action no problem the reason that happens because we've added this after we've created the animation is because it is this object that actually animates, not everything beneath it. So now what we need to do on the cube is right click, rename, and let's call this um, platform grip. So this will be what grips our player. And we just need to turn off the mesh renderer and also tick is trigger. So if we go to our scripts folder, right click, create C sharp script, we'll have platform gripper now this can be used universally on any platform so it's not specific to this platform that we are creating so you can create many many platforms and the principle would still be the same so in doing this what we need to do is add in uh, or rather take away these methods because we don't need start or update and the idea of what we're doing is we need the player to be um, essentially part of that specific object so we need to find the object and the player as a variable so public the ledge uh, oops helps if I actually define it as a game object game object the ledge semicolon and public game object the player semicolon so these are the only two variables that are relevant to us within this platform section. And we need to use the method on trigger enter like we have done a couple of times before. So void on trigger enter, open close bracket and open curly bracket. And we don't need it to be private and we don't need anything in the parentheses. And all we do is when we enter this trigger, the player then needs to become a parent. Uh, sorry, I said the parent. The uh, object of the actual ledge becomes the parent. The player becomes the child. So we need to parent it together. And we do that by going the player dot transform dot parent equals the ledge dot transform semicolon. So what we're saying here is the parent for the player becomes the ledge. Okay. Next, what we need to do is the inverse of that, and that will be void on trigger exit. So on trigger exit. And once again, we don't need it to be private. And we don't need anything in the parentheses. That can go. And it really is just as simple as saying the player transfer its parent is nothing. So the player dot transform dot parent equals null semicolon and save and it really is as simple as that to actually allow the platform to grip our player so we just need to attach that script to the platform grip make sure not the platform it has to be the grip and then we just set those two variables there so the player is unity jam and the ledge is the platform so now if we press play we can go all the way over here and then we can walk onto our ledge and you can see we are moving along with the ledge perfect so all this means now is to uncouple ourselves or rather not glitch we would kind of that that would happen anyway so we just need to oops actually learn to play the game properly Jimmy so 
To put this in motion again, we just need to get ourselves onto the ledge. And then at the end, when we come off, we're no longer attached, which is how we want it to be. So that is the motion of getting animations working. Now, there are different ways, and in all honesty, you probably could have done with a bit of a better uh, third-person character. Maybe you found one in the asset store. Who knows? Unity Chan seems to be a little bit cumbersome at times. But nevertheless, uh, let's move swiftly on. So I said we were going to work on start and finish in this episode, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to have this area as my finish. And what I'm going to do is, if you remember, very early on we imported this start finish uh, texture. So I'm going to take this cube right here, hold control, press D, and get it out of its prefab. I'm going to right click and I'll rename. And let's have it as finish block um, 001, I guess. And let's bring it out. So it's detached from that prefab. And we just need to drag and drop the start finish onto it. Uh, I think I will... Yes, I, I'm going to have it as a normal map as well. So start finish uh, underscore N. Change it to normal map. Apply. And let's apply that to the material. So start finish onto there. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I like how that looks. So let's, ooh, I, di I didn't expect that to be honest. That's not what I expected to see, but I do like how that looks. So the finish block, hold control, press D. I'm gonna bring it to like a finish area as it were. So we cross this finish line in some ways. Uh, let's rotate by 90, oops, not scale. Rotate by 90 and rotate, uh, let's go 90 there as well. Uh, 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 if I can remember how to do it correctly. I think it's because, oh, do you know what? It's because of the texture itself, not to worry. I'm going to rotate that by 90 as well. Okay, so there is our crazy looking finish. And I'm going to take this block here just to kind of surround it. Uh, let's drag that out to there. Bring it together. So once we cross this finish line, that is the level complete. So the idea of what we're going to do is once we cross this finish line, we're going to stop everything and have a bit of a jingle. Say, oh, that's the end of the level. So we'll do that by using the same principle we've just had and use that on trigger enter. You'll, you'll never believe how useful that can actually be. So hold control, press D. Let's bring that block up, turn the mesh renderer off. I'll right click, rename, and I have finish game trigger and what I'll do now is I'm going to change my snap settings so edit snap settings and change it to 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 I'm going to snap this to there so it kind of comes in the middle and then I'll increase the scale on the Z to 4 so it's perfectly in the middle of that finish so let's tick is trigger as well because we're going to need that Next thing what we need to do is in assets, uh, sorry, the scripts folder in the assets folder, we need to create that script, which will allow us to finish the game. So right click, create C-sharp script, and let's have this finish level. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. Now, we're not gonna fully complete this script in this episode because there's a lot we need to do. Uh, next episode is gonna be a lot of fun because we're gonna do some more UI with uh, animations attached to them. But for now, we just want to finish our level. So firstly, we need to go public and game object. I'm, I'm gonna disable the music object that plays. So level music, semicolon, next. Is going to be a little jingle to say we finished the level. So public audio source, and we'll call it level complete, semicolon. And I'm just trying to think of other things we need to do because ultimately what we'll need to do is turn off Unity Chan. And essentially, I think what uh, we'll do for now is I'll leave her active and we just need to get the idea of completing the level. We need to get that sense of completion. So we'll go void on 
trigger enter and again it does not need to be private and we don't need anything else in the parentheses uh, we'll do level music dot set active in brackets false semicolon and then level complete dot play oh, close bracket save that script at the same time we're also going to need to stop our timer from running so the global timer object can also be a variable that can be turned off so public game object level timer semicolon and that also applies here level timer dot set active false and semicolon and save so I'm going to bring in a quick little audio file which is going to be that jingle when we cross this crazy looking finish line uh, so in the audio folder let's drag and drop this complete tone and it is on the website for free if you head over there and same principle applies on the main camera as we did with gem collect hold control press d to duplicate that gem collect right click rename level complete and drag and drop that complete tone onto there and just remember that we need to have play on awake unticked so next thing we need to um, actually sort out this level audio uh, rather than have it as a component on the main camera I'm going to have it as an actual object on the main camera. So right click, create empty, F2, level audio. I'm going to drag and drop it onto there and have the same properties as we did previously, which is tick play on awake, tick loop, and the volume is 0.1. So volume 0.1. And at the same time, let's remove the audio source from the main camera. Okay, so finished game trigger we have everything we need there to set up we just need to attach the script to it so if I can find it finish level onto there so level music is the level audio level complete is level complete and a global timer object goes into level timer so now let's press play and check out the finish sequence so up we go and across we go so at this point this is what i would like to see uh, pop up on screen with some ui and animation and basically tell us our score so that's going to be what we do in the next episode we're going to have uh, some mixed animation with ui uh, some ui on completion as well as some mathematics to calculate our final score and basically fade our screen out to say that is the level complete. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.